Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. In one of my upcoming videos I'll be reviewing the pastel pencils from Bruinzeel. So as always I like to make one piece using only the pencils from the brand I'm reviewing. I do have to admit I'm cheating a little bit on this one since I'm using pen pastels for my underlayer. I always prefer to use another type of pastel for my underlayer other than pencils because underlayers tend to eat a lot of your pencil away and I like to make my pencils last as long as I can. For this particular piece there is also another reason and that is the amount of Bruinzeel pastel pencils available. They only have a maximum of 48 colors and since I'm drawing a black panther I did want to make sure I had enough depth in there. Now despite their smaller size they look very interesting because the pastel pencils from Bruinzeel come at a very affordable price. So don't forget to check the review after I uploaded the video next week. The aim for the background is a blurry jungle scene. So by now you've seen me add a mix of green pan pastels. I also used a little bit of brown in there to hint to some trees. Now normally it's best to wipe off your tools when you go from one color to another but in this case I kinda like that the brown mixes in a bit with the green giving me yet another shade of green. Like always, I worked from dark to light, waiting with my two lightest greens for the top layer. By adding some strokes on top of the background, you're able to create the effect of leaves while keeping everything very blurry. For the panther itself, I'm using some black mixed with blue. With this, I started to outline some of the lightest parts of the panther and while I'm doing this, on occasion I'll add a little bit of purple to the drawing as well. These are areas where I wanted my values to be a little bit lighter. Some of the other blank areas I'm going to fill up with pure black for a nice contrast between light and dark. I've mentioned this a few times already, but I personally love how versatile the soft tools are. I can use them to fill up the paper easily with the flat part, and when I want a little bit more accuracy, I can just tilt the tool and use the side. Another reason why you want to put the background in first is because you can draw your subject on top of it and don't have to worry as much about the edges. Just make sure that when you are working on the edges that you go a little bit on top of your background. This way you don't leave a small gap of blank paper in between your subject and your background. And when I feel like I'm done with the underlayer it's time to put these pencils to the test. On the right you can see the palette of color that I was going to use although I ended up not using every pencil that I displayed here. To add some depth in the black fur I'll first use a light purple. To the left and right of this I'll use grey. And I'm adding the grey because this will mute the purple down a bit. Next I'm using black. The part where I used a lot of purple and grey I'll just add a little bit because you want to make sure this light part stays very visible. This is where the panther turns a bit and catches a lot of light. In turn this light is reflected and the purple in combination with the grey does a great job at bringing this out. I'm going to repeat this process on the bottom part of my painting where the chest of the panther is. Again you will have more light there and I'm using that mix of purple and grey to bring this out. You could just use grey as this is what reflects the light the most but by adding purple to the mix you give this way more depth. Then moving on to the face I decided to start with a darker grey first. I'm working on the face now so the fur tends to be really short here so I adjust my length to this. Another perk of working on top of an underlayer is that you have some guidelines to work from. After I've done this I love to blend it out a little bit with my finger to soften things up. This is more of a personal choice however. You could leave it as is but then your end result will be a little bit more harsh where I like it to be a little bit softer. I'll also add a little bit of lighter grey for some more highlights. Then for the ear I also used some brown in there to make it a little bit warmer on the inside. Other than that I'm just using black since the ears don't really catch a lot of light. Just at the top of the ear I add some highlights with grey. I still need to add some fur on the left side of the face. Because I used another black for the underlayer I can go on top of this with the black pencil from Bruinzeel and it will still show through. Again this is another perk of doing your underlayer with another brand or another color. If I had done this underlayer purely with this black pencil I would have a hard time adding details with the same pencil. And next up is my favorite part, the eyes. The size I'm working on is A4 which gives me a little bit of room for details in the eyes. I love working on the eyes which is why I love to do eye studies since this gives you a lot of room for a small feature leaving you with lots of space for detail. I already have quite a few eye studies on my channel if this is something you find interesting. 
I'm also blessed with very talented pets as subjects so the cat and the dog's eyes online have been created with the help of my own lovable minions. Since both eyes are quite similar, I'll skip the first one for now and then go over the second one in a bit. I'm going to work back on the fur for now, starting with the top part. I first use some dark grey and make sure when you are working on this area that you bend your strokes a little bit since the face curves there a little bit. The purple again is to make the black a little bit more interesting and on parts where there is a lot of light you can keep it like this and on other parts I'll just go over it with some black to mute it back down a bit. While I'm getting some more fur in, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed by now. I post weekly videos mostly about soft pastels, so if this is a subject that you are interested in, you've come to the right channel. On occasion I also post acrylic videos and a recent addition is watercolor. After trying watercolor about 5 times in a 4 year period, I think I finally found how this medium works for me. Hope I didn't just jinx it now though. Also, don't forget to hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. Starting on the nose right now, I first added some purple with some black to mute it back down and I also used some ochre there. Not a lot, just enough to make it a bit warmer and then I just used some grey on there. Remember the fur leading up to the nose is the shortest of all, so make sure you use short strokes there. Again, I blend this out a little bit to make it a little softer. Next I use black for the nostrils and a small blending stump to push this into my paper. Since I have some pastel residue left on this stump, I can already rub some of this on my paper. This way I darken it up already and I clean my stump a bit. Win win. I'll use a bit of brown in there to make it warmer and on top I'll add blue. Since I've already put black in there with the stump, I also get a darker shade of blue which is a perfect base. Again, push it into the paper a little bit. Now I tend to stick to the same technique for the nose, I just keep adding circular shapes. So in this case I started with the grey, I push this a bit into paper and I'll repeat the process. Here I chose to go with white. I'm also going down the nose with this to catch the light there. At the moment this is a little bit light, so too light, so I'll add some black on top. But I repeat it a few times, even adding some purple and blue to it. For the time being I'm keeping it like this, but as I finish more of my drawing I will adjust it. Moving on to the muzzle, I use some brown right underneath the nose and next to this I'm using a mix of purple and a bit of grey before I go over this with black. This is my base and then I will add some lighter grey for the highlights. The area underneath these sides is where the mouth is shaped. In this case this means I'll just darken it up there with black because the mouth is closed and there is nothing to see except the shadow that is cast. I'll just make sure to have some strokes overlapping this area from the top of the lips, this to indicate some fur that overlaps there. Now the bottom part is very light and above the chin I'm also using brown again. Brown is a good mix with black here where you want your fur to appear a little bit warmer. Like I mentioned before I do go back to the nose again. Since I have a bit more of the surrounding areas blocked in, I have a better feel for the drawing as a whole. Now let's have a closer look at the eye. I first start with the yellow to fill this up in a circular shape, but I go over this with ochre to darken it up a bit. Next to this I'm using brown. I also add in black to indicate where the pupil is. And I'm using the black as well for the outlines here and with the blending stump I'll push everything into the paper. You'll also see me drag a little bit of that black into the iris to add some of those stripes that are inherent to ice. I'll repeat the process of the brown, yellow and ochre to make the colors pop some more. Do note that I tried to leave a little bit of blank space where I'll add white for the highlights in the eyes. The last time I go there with color, I'm also doing this with lines. Lastly, a very important part is that you have to add in the highlight on the eyelid. I'm using a dark grey for this. This is very important to give your eye its depth because it shows the light being catched there. And after that I'm happy with how this panther is looking at me. Then I'm ready to add in the last parts of the panther and that is the fur on the right side and the right ear. This is mostly a repetition of the left side since the panther is hit with the same light throughout the whole face. So while I'm doing this, I would just like to mention that I also have a newsletter. I send one of these out each month and I give you a recap of what I have been up to in the last month. Besides this, there is another benefit for you. I also love wildlife photography and in my spare time I love to go and shoot some pictures. I love to work from my own photos and from time to time I will use one of these for my videos on YouTube. 
Now, if you are subscribed to my newsletter, you'll receive four of these reference pictures each month. I'm proud of pictures that I give you since they are always of a quality that I would use for my own reference pictures. And if you're lucky, you'll receive some that you can use to follow a video of mine. By now, I finished adding in the final parts and I also went over some bits, adjusting some more. All that is left to do now is to add in some stray hairs and the whiskers. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them down below. And don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter using the link in the description. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And I also have a lot of other videos on my channel that might interest you. So definitely check them out. Next Friday, I'll be back with another video. See you then. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great week.